Hey, I'm Spongebob from the Be Music project and today we're going to add some more waveforms to our synthesizer project. And we will use a lot of new features from C++11. As in the last times I will not only show you how to use these new features, but I also show you their resources. So it makes sense to take breaks and take a look at them. But back to our synth. First step is to duplicate and rename. Again, we copy and paste our last project and rename it to My Simple Synth. Remove the binary and rename the files to My Simple Synth 2. Open the manifest.ttl and replace all My Synth Synths by My Simple Synth. And the same with My Simple Synth.ttl. We can keep the plugin types, the version numbers, the supported features, and so on. We only need a control for the selection of the waveform. So we copy all we need from the attack port. Index will stay at 2, we will change the others later. And we name it to waveform. Then we need a port property for our selection. Best would be an enumeration like in C++, with assigned integer values, like 0 for sine waves, 1 for triangle waves, and so on. Let's take a look into the specs. And there are both integer and enumeration. So we first add LV2 integer and then LV2 enumeration. Now we have to define the members of this enum and this can be done with a scale point predicate. But what about the object? The object has to take up a name and a value. So we can create an anonymous object with the basic RTF and RTFS properties label and value and type lv2 colon scale point squared brackets RTFS colon label sign semicolon RTF colon value zero. And the same with triangle and one. Square will be two, saw waves will get the number three and we will add a noise generator to four. Default will be 0 for sign, as integer, not float, and the limit will be 0 to 4. Now we only have to renumber the other ports, and that's all for the TTLs. Now to the C++ code file. Until now we did programming in very classic, very simple C++, the 1990s style. But let's do the time warp. Jump to C++11, with exceptions, templates, streams, containers and so on. But we will firstly replace all my sign synths to my simple synths again. As I move to the clan compiler, I see a warning I haven't seen before. Duplicate extern. Yes, this is true, as extern is already in the LV2 symbol export. So I can remove this. Then we add the new control waveform to our enum control ports and adapt the numbers. Before we implement this new feature, we will firstly clean up all weak parts of the code which we left for improvement. And we will use modern C++ for this. The first weakness was the throw call if the required map feature is missing. This causes the program to silently abort without creating a plugin instance. Not the nicest way. But you can also throw an exception and handle this exception later. Let's take a look into the C++ reference. There are exceptions. And there, the standard exceptions. What fits best for the missing feature? Invalid argument might be close, but it doesn't matter that much which one you will take, and you can even define your own exceptions. So we add standard invalid argument, and a string or a C string as argument. This will be the error message. Standard invalid argument is not known yet, it's in the standard accept header. So we include standard accept. Back to the error message. Let's write feature map not provided by the host, can't instantiate my simple synth. As the constructor now may throw an exception, we should handle it in instantiate, where we call the constructor. And this is done with try and catch, which you can find in many other programming languages. The keyword try is followed by a body. If something is inside the body that causes an exception, the program stops the execution of the body and look if the execution is caught with the keyword catch and the respective exception as parameter and a body where you can handle the respective exception. Like printing an error message. Multiple catch blocks are allowed for different types of exceptions. And what happens if an exception is thrown but not caught? Then it will be re-thrown to the next level, until the program is aborted if not caught. Enough theory, add the try catch block. We have now to declare and initialize m outside the block, otherwise it would be out of the scope for return. 
In try we will assign it with the pointer returned from new my simple synth. Now we can catch standard invalid argument. Const as we do not change this exception and pass an error message onto the standard error console stream. In C++, C error. Passing to a stream is done with double errors. And what returns the string with the error message we just defined before. C error is not known yet, it's in the IR stream heater, so we include this one. And we should an end line for a line break. Another important exception is bad alloc. This one should always be handled if new is called, as new throws an exception if it fails to allocate memory, like for out of memory. Bad alloc comes without parameters and is defined in the new heater. So include this one. And catch bad alloc. And pass the error message to C error. Fail to allocate memory, can't instantiate my simple synth. In both cases we have to return null to signal the host that instantiation failed. In my sign synth we still use the old C style type casting. This might be okay for the most cases, but can be ambitious. The C++ casting operators const cast, static cast, dynamic cast and reinterpret cast provide more control. Static cast is the right one in most cases. The syntax is static cast, the type in angle brackets and the content to be casted in parentheses. So we type static cast my simple synth and asterisk in angle brackets and instance in parentheses. And the same in run and cleanup. Author the double cast in the key constructor. And in press. And the flowed cast in get. And also the type conversions from void pointer in connect port. And there is also a C style type conversion of our MIDI data and run. But static cast produces an error due to incompatible types. So we have to do this on the hard way with reinterpret cast. Next we take a closer look to the control port values. We use them directly from the control ports without checking their validity. This can be dangerous, so we will take hands on. So we create a new member array, this time using standard array from the standard template library. Array needs the member type float and the size control nr as parameters in the angle brackets. And of course we have to include array first. By the way, take care if you use the standard template library containers in real-time audio programming, as the most containers use memory allocation and thus are not real-time compatible. But array is an exception. Then we can do the same with control PTR2. We move the initialization to the body and fill the control PTR with null pointers and control with zero. Then we can copy the control port values with a for loop we already know. Copying is only needed if the content where control PTR for each index points to differs from the respective control value. For checking the validity of the port values we need to know their respective valid range. So we define an array with float value pairs for lower and higher limits for each control. Const expression, this means that the content values are constant and already known at the compilation time. Standard array, standard pair, this is defined in the utility heater, float and float for the members, and the size is control nr, and we call it control limits. Then we define it, take care about the double curly brackets for standard array initialization in C++11. And then we enter the pairs of minimum and maximum as defined in the TTL file also in curly brackets, for each control. Now we only need a function that keeps a value within its defined limits. I always wonder why there is not such a function in the C++ standard libraries. So we have to do this by ourselves. And we will use the template feature of C++. Templates allow to pass types to a definition. So this feature allows to define a class or a function only once for multiple types. Static cast and standard array and pair are realized as features too. Function templates start with the keyword template and the parameters in angle brackets. Class T means that the type is passed, which will call for simplicity T in this definition. T will later be replaced by the passed type by the compiler. Our function will return a value of type T, we call the function limit. And we pass the value x, the minimum and the maximum with the type T respectively, and they will stay constant. 
Inside we will do some checks and we will use a conditional operator, also known as ternary operator, and conditional expressions. If the first expression is true, then the second expression is used, otherwise the third. You can also encapsulate multiple conditional expressions. Here we return min if x is lower than min, otherwise return max if x exceeds max, and otherwise return x. The limit function is called with the type in angle brackets and with the parameters in parentheses. These are the dereference control PTR index i and the first and the second part of the control limits index i pair. As we now have got our validated controls, we should also use them for the level in play and for the RDSR values in the MIDI interpreter. There was a homework just a few weeks ago. Do you remember? There were nasty clicks in my test tone and in my sign synth too if you changed the level. Why? Very simple. The level control is not permanently updated if you drag the slider. The update frequency depends on the user interface implementation and might be sometimes as low as 10 times per second or even less. This may produce steps in audio output and audible clicks. The way to prevent this is a fader that slowly fades from the old to the new value. And we can do this in a template class. It will be a linear fader. We need a destination value, the remaining distance to the destination in frames, therefore unsigned integer, and the actual value. We also need a constructor with a single starting value for a value and destination. A setter in which we will set the new destination and the distance, a getter which simply returns the actual value, and a proceed method. We do the definition directly in the declaration. This is okay for very short definitions, but should be omitted otherwise. In the constructor, we initialize our destination underscore member with the past destination parameter. Distance underscore with zero and value underscore will already be destination. The setter will pass the parameters destination and distance to their respective members. The value will be later updated in process unless the distance is zero. Then the value is directly set to destination. The getter simply returns value underscore in proceed we set again the value to destination if the distance is zero. Otherwise we increase the value by the difference of destination and value multiplied by 1 by double cast distance. Simple rule of proportion. And the distance will be increased by 1. Now we can declare a linear fader with type float for the level control and initialize it with zero. In our validate block in run, if the control is changed and if i is control level, then we call the setter with the new control value and the number of samples for 10 milliseconds, thus 0.01 times rate. 10 milliseconds should work for the most cases, but you can try to optimize it. Of course we have to replace the not faded control by the faded control level and its getter inside play. And we also have to proceed control level there. There's still one thing to fix. In the last programming session we assigned both all notes of and all sounds of with key of, for simplicity. But this is not the intended way. All notes of should release all notes, but we don't have any key or velocity to pass. All sounds of should softly mute the sound instead of brutally switching it off and causing clicks. Now these methods need to be defined. Release already exists, but C++ allows overloading. Thus we can declare an additional release method with differing parameters, in this case no parameters. And we declare a mute method. Release without parameters simply called the release with parameters, note and velocity. Mute will cause the sound to fade out, so we need a fader and we can use the class we already defined before. The fader will use the type float and we will simply call it fader. The fader will be initialized with 1. In the definition of the mute method we set the fader to zero over a time of 10 milliseconds, as we have done it before with control level in the my simple synth class. We allow to recover the fader and press by fader.set to 1 immediately. And of course we have to use the fader as a factor in the get method. Now to the new feature, the waveform. We have defined five types of waveforms as enumerations in the TTL file. So we do this in the code too. Enum waveform, sine is 0, triangle is 1, square is 2, saw is 3, and noise is 4. And the number of waveforms is 5. We should pass a new waveform control to the key press method. The control is float, but it would be better to use a new waveform enum. So we have to cast it to waveform with static cast. Red lines. 
the linter complains about too many parameters. No surprise, as Keypress doesn't know anything about the additional waveform parameter. So we have to add this one. But first we define a waveform member. Then add a const waveform parameter to the press declaration. Init waveform with waveform sign. Also add const waveform to the press method definition head. And store this parameter in waveform. Now we can handle the different waveforms in get, but this would be a bit too much here. Therefore we declare a private synth method which will return float. We will inline it as this is a time critical method. Inside we will handle the different waveforms in a switch case block. In the case of waveform sign, we copy and paste the sign code from get and return it. And replace the sign code in get by synth. For all other cases we need the value of the position behind the dot. This can be achieved by the cmask function fmod for the division by 1. So we type const float p is fmod position and 1.0. Now to the case waveform triangle, there are three subconditions. P is less than 0.25, then the curve linearly rises from 0 to 1, thus 4 times P. Otherwise, if P is greater than 0.25 but less than 0.75, then it drops from 1 to minus 1, thus 1 minus 4 times P minus 0.25. And for the remaining case of P is higher than 0.75, then it rises from minus 1 to 0, Thus, minus 1 plus 4 times p minus 0.75. Square is easier, only two conditions. If p is lower than 0.5, then we return 1, otherwise minus 1. And so is nothing else than 2 times p minus 1. Noise is generated from randomly distributed audio signals, so we need a random engine. And C has really got a lot of them. C also has got one, but don't use this one, as it isn't real time safe. First we need to include the random heater and C time for the initialization of the random engine. Then we have to declare two members. The first one is a random engine and we use the most simple one, the min standard rand. The second one is a uniform real distribution of the type float. We will later use it to distribute the output of the random engine within the limits of this distribution. RD will be initialized with the system time, standard time and zero. And this will be from minus 1 to 1. Now we can return for waveform noise, dist RD. And we will return 0 for default, although this should never happen. I'll also include the utility heater for standard pair for the case that other compilers may complain about it. Now it's time to compile. Compiling command like the last times, we only need to adapt the input and output file names. We create a new folder for our mysimplesense.lv2 in our lv2 directory. Copy and paste the binary and the TDL files. That's it. Time for testing. Once again in Ardor. The simple sense works. Also watch the other videos in this series. For more information take a look into the LV2 tutorial github repository.